Hello, welcome to Digits. I'm George Stahl. We begin the show talking about Microsoft, which has a new leader at the head of its Windows operating division. And here to talk about it is Shira Overday from San Francisco. Shira, how are you doing? Good, how are you, George? So a lot of the focus so far in the coverage has been on Steven Sanofsky, the outgoing Windows guy, leaving. Right. Now, let's That's shift right. it a little bit to, to the two women that are coming in to replace him. What do we know about them? <laughs> uh, so the two women, as you said, are Julie Larson Green, who has worked with Steven Sanofsky now in two divisions at Microsoft, both on the Windows team and at the Microsoft Office division. Uh, and Tammy Reller, who's been the CFO and the marketing chief of the Windows division and is now kind of adding additional business responsibilities as well. So sort of an engineering head at Julie Larson Green and a sort of marketing finance head with Tammy Reller, the, the two-headed uh, two machine running well, Windows now. Why, why two and not just one? <laughs> It's a good question, and I think um, some people that I spoke to today wondered if this was uh, kind of an interim step and maybe one of them or somebody else entirely takes uh, full ownership of Windows. Other people said, you know, the Windows division is really more than a one-person job now, that you really do need somebody, as they have now, uh, somebody to tackle the sort of engineering responsibilities and somebody else maybe to tackle the business side responsibilities. How will it work between the two of them? Is there one that will be the final arbiter? It just seems as if there's, unless there's a good relationship already, there could be some uh, pushing and shoving to try to see who's going to be at the top of the Windows division. Uh, yeah, I think that's a fair concern. I mean, business history is riddled with co-heads or co-CEOs that have uh, fought and, and never worked out. In this case, these are two executives who have worked together inside Windows under Mr. Sanofsky for, uh, for a number of years, so they do know each other well. By all accounts, according to Microsoft executives and others I've spoken to today, they are, you know, they are extremely collaborative type of people, something not said often of Steven Sanofsky. <laughs> um, so we'll see how well they work together. And internally, how are the two perceived? Internally, I think they're, they're perceived very well. I mean, again, this is, particularly for Julie Larson Green, this is a big step up for her. She's somebody who's been responsible for the look and feel of both Office and Windows. You know, she's responsible for things like the ribbon uh, menu in Office, which a lot of people don't like, and also for the start menu kind of going away in Windows 8. But hmm. this is a big step up in responsibility for her, although she is well regarded and well liked inside and outside Microsoft. What about the timing of the moves? It comes just as Windows 8 was launched. How right. will that impact the jobs that they inherit? Yeah, I think the timing was a surprise for a lot of people. We should say we don't know all of the reasons behind uh, Steven Sanofsky's departure that may have played a role in the, the timing just after the launch of Windows 8. I, uh, hopefully, they've uh, Microsoft's laid the groundwork for these two new leaders and they know what they're doing. Like I said, they've been in these in these roles at Windows for a long time. It shouldn't come as a as a big surprise to them. Um, it's more of an outside perception issue. As we can see, the stocks you know been dropping today uh, on this news from about Sanofsky leaving. How big of a uh, of a, how meaningful is it that it's two women who is replacing uh, Steven Sanofsky? That it's it's now yeah. uh, two women running the Windows division. Uh, on the one hand, um, you know there are certainly very powerful women throughout tech. The the head of IBM, um, the head of HP. So so right. you know women certainly have already uh, embedded themselves into the tech leadership. Well, on the other hand, this is the first. These are the first females to, to run the Windows division. How big a, how big of an achievement is it? Or how notable is it? I think it's a it? big deal. Yeah, I think it's it's definitely notable. It's something that I picked up on and a couple of people that I talked to today picked up on. As you said, it's been a pretty good year for women in technology at IBM, at HP, at Xerox, all have new women leaders. Um, and, and at Microsoft, this is a company that doesn't have tons of women in senior leadership roles. Um, and so for them to name two women to run Windows, it is, it is notable. What about future moves? Do we expect anything else or, or is this it for now for Microsoft? It's a good question. I, I don't think we have an answer right away. Steven Sanofsky had a, a, a coterie of lieutenants inside, my, inside Windows, including Julie Larson Green, and some people asked whether 
uh, some of those folks might follow him out the door. Uh, I think the sense I'm getting is that that's unlikely right now, that this was kind of a, a one-man, you know, just a Sanofsky decision, and everybody else is likely to stay in place. But, you know, Microsoft is a changing company. Steve Ballmer, the CEO, has talked a lot about how he wants the companies to kind of mesh more together, all the divisions of Microsoft are kind of notorious for being warring with each other. He wants them to get along so that the products work seamlessly together. And uh, the, you know, the question's been raised whether the leadership that's in place is the right leadership to lead that new kind of Microsoft. Well, something tells me that there's still more to come and you'll be there to cover it for us. Thank you, Shira.